there's a lot of money up for grabs on Saturday for these NFL games. And look, between me and you, you deserve it. So these are the plays you want to play and avoid for Saturday. And we'll even throw in a couple of bets during this. Let's start with Christian Kirk, who's $6,200. And even though that's not that expensive, it's the second highest on this slate. Now get this. Kirk only needs 91 yards in this game to get an extra $500,000 in incentive bonuses. And for a player who's already seen really good usage, 22 deep targets is top 15 in the league. He's fifth in red zone targets. I like his chances of hitting that incentive if you're talking about bets. But not only that, I like his chances of paying off this price tag. So I'm actually a fan of Kirk against a poor Tennessee secondary where he had a nice game last time out against them in terms of overall targets. How about his teammate Zay Jones, who's $5,000 and he also has an incentive. If he gets 98 yards in this game, he has an extra $500,000 cashed in for this final week. It's his last chance to do it. Now we sort of fallen back down to earth the last two weeks, two points and five points, but we could break this down. The two point week, okay, it's a bad week, but he was facing a tough Jets secondary. Five point week, he gets pulled in the midway through the third quarter with the rest of the starters in this one. So it wasn't even really a full game. I'll have interest in Zay Jones at $5,000. He is definitely a better play than Christian Kirk when you factor in the price. But according to the DFS blueprint, he is picking up significantly more ownership. All right, we got to talk about $4,200 Trey Burks because he's a wide receiver one for his team, but he's this cheap. Okay, so check this out. He returned from injury a couple weeks ago against Houston. He displays 79% of the snaps, then 76% of the snaps last week. Those are his two highest on the year. In last week's game, he saw a season high and thus a career high as a rookie, 33 routes and eight targets. Now he did this with Josh Dobbs at the helm. He'll be quarterback again. He's going to have a nice matchup. So I like him. He's a yes. What about Robert Woods, his teammate? Well, with Dobbs at quarterback, Woods saw a team high nine targets. He kind of came to life in this one, found the end zone, almost 15 fantasy points, basically his best game on the year or one of his best from a fantasy perspective. But the issue with Woods is that, look, he had high volume, but he needs high volume because so far this season, Woods ranks 75th, by far a career worst, a 30-year-old wide receiver coming off a torn ACL in yards after the catch, and he's having his worst efficiency season. Now, this makes Woods more of a touchdown or bust because even if he has high volume, he doesn't do much after the catch and he doesn't separate. Okay, so I'm not interested in Woods, but what about the quarterback in that game on the opposite side, Trevor Lawrence, who's just $6,100. And we all know what he did last time he played this team. He was the best quarterback on the week, going for 368 yards, three touchdowns. This was his best game of his career, four touchdowns when you count the rushing one. And now this week, he has a lower team total. Vegas is expecting this to be more of a rushing affair with a slower pace and lower overall scoring environment. So when we consider that, and in my projections right now in the DFS blueprint link down below, on Patreon if you're interested in checking them out. He has a very similar projection to Jared Stidham, who's $700 less in a better game environment. So I'm actually not interested in Trevor Lawrence, but what about Patrick Mahomes right now, who's still searching for the one seed, has the highest team total at 30.7 more than any other game. And Mahomes needs 430 yards. That's a lot, but to set the all-time passing record, it's probably something he's thinking about and he has the best matchup to do so. He gets the Raiders number 30 ranked secondary, and since the start of 2019, Mahomes is averaging 323 yards and 31 points in fantasy against the secondary. And because of all that's in play this week for Mahomes, the Chiefs, and the matchup. I'm going to be taking him over 290 and a half passing yards. I have him over 300 projected this week in the player props tool. Now we'll touch on more bets later in the video, so be sure to stay tuned. But how about a player to pair with Patrick Mahomes? Well, an obvious one is Travis Kelsey. He's extremely expensive, over $3,000 more than any other tight end. But when the guy has 28 red zone targets, over nine targets per game, leading all tight ends pretty easily, yeah, you got to play him. But maybe you get different by also playing another tight end. On these two game slates where there's a lot of expensive players, it does get appealing to play a cheaper tight end. How about Darren Waller on the opposite side? Now, since Waller has returned from injury. He has not been playing his normal snaps, but last week we saw he saw 47, 40%, but last week he at least saw 64%. We saw that jump upwards and hopefully we can get him closer to 70 to 80% this week. Now it is a little bit risky because he's still splitting time a decent amount with Foster Moreau, but I do think Darren Waller is in play and it is a pretty unique build to go Kelsey and Waller. But if you don't want Waller, let's try and find some other cheap options from this game. And one of those options might be Kadarius Tony, who's only $4,000 this week. And look at what Kadarius Tony has been doing. He returned from injury in week 15, just 6% of the snaps, but it's slowly coming up 29% and then 34% this past week. That's the most he's seen since week 10 when he joined Kansas City and put up 19 fantasy points. If we start to see close to a 50% snap share in this type of a game environment with Patrick Mahomes, yes, I like Kadarius Tony this week. How about his teammate MVS who look, he saw his strong role return last week. MVS played 81% of the snaps, his second most on the year and his most since week 10. It led to seven targets, but only two catches. He's been off with Mahomes all season long, but he's still going to run probably around 25 to 30 routes with that upside. So it keeps him in play at this price tag. Now, a player who is very difficult to kind of parse right now is McCole Harmon. He's $3,700. He was expected to return last week, but he re-injured his back in practice. But as of Wednesday of this week, he was practicing. If he's activated in time, he'll be able to play this week. You have to track that news. Maybe he's already inactive for this week and done for the year. But they don't want to shut him down for the year because they want to use him in the postseason. So it looks like he'll maybe play in this one. I don't expect him to see a full-time role, but if he plays, he'll impact Kadarius Tony. He'll impact MVS and this next guy. And that next guy is $3,000 Justin Watson, who was 
was playing 60% of the snaps for seven straight weeks, but last week he fell back down to earth with Kadarius Tony seeing more usage, only 30% of the snaps. I'm not all that interested, especially if McCole Harmon returns. So maybe you end up wanting a Tony or an MVS to throw a dart on, but the guy you really want from this receiving core is Juju. Juju is just $5,400 coming in at fair ownership. I thought he'd maybe be the highest owned player on the slate. He's not right now. And look, he only played 63% of the snaps last week. That might be some concern for some people, but he was still out there for about 75% of the passing plays, which is his normal role. He struggled to put up big points the last couple of weeks, but on the entire season, he's pretty good. He saw eight targets versus the Raiders last week. I like him at the price tag. Okay, finally, we get to the running back position here. How about Jarek McKinnon at 6,300? The second most points since week 13, only McCaffrey has more. And what that breaks down to during that time is 23.2 fantasy points per game on just 11.2 touches, five catches and 6.2 attempts per game. That's insane to do on such low volume. And it's because he has eight touchdowns over his last five games, which is like beginning of the year, Clyde Edwards Hilaire usage that's not going to sustain, especially when you consider he's only out there the last couple of weeks for 52% and 43% of the passing plays. It's not like he's out there for 70% of these passing plays. He's somewhat getting lucky, especially in the touchdown department. So at relatively high ownership this week, uh, he's not going to be completely out of play when there's only like four or five running backs in play this week, but he's not somebody I want to jump to. I'd rather play his teammate, Isaiah Pacheco. You see, Pacheco last week for the first time in a while didn't go over 80 total yards. He only had about 50, but he found the end zone continuing to put up decent totals, 13 points. He's now topped 80 total yards or scored a touchdown in eight straight games as a seventh round rookie. This is impressive. And now he's a seven point favorite with a 30 point team total. I like that. So much so that I took him over 56 and a half rushing yards this week. I have him in the upper 60s. And I have another prop later on in the video so we can close out this entire bet on prize picks. If you want to tail this one and then take those ones that we have later on, use the link in the description below, the code SAL22. That is SAL22 and you'll get a free bet up to $100. You put in 20, it's a match. You get 20 back. You put in 100, you get 100 right back. Okay, so that's the mid range at running back. And now all the way up top is Derrick Henry. He is coming off of being rested, still leading the entire NFL in rushing volume. And now he gets a matchup versus the Jaguars that he loves. Since the beginning of 2018, he averages over 24 fantasy points per game. And when you factor in his receiving yards, over 135 total yards per game versus this team. And he's added to those totals earlier this year, putting up over 150 total yards, a touchdown, 25 and a half DraftKings points. I mean, he's just been absolutely fantastic. But now he is a seven point favorite this week, which is a 16 and a half point team total. And he's expensive. So at this expensive price tag, he's in play, but... He's picking up ownership still. He's not all that appealing. And when it comes down to it, you're going to have to choose. Do you want Kelsey, Mahomes, Derrick Henry, or Adams? You can't have them all. You can maybe only have two of them. And I'm going to choose Devontae Adams over Derrick Henry. You see, last week he had a play with Jared Stidham. No issues at all. He ends up getting 11 targets. He goes off a couple touchdowns. You can't expect him to go for 37 fantasy points a game, but it was nice to see him have success with Stidham. And earlier this year, he scored over 30 DraftKings points against Kansas City. They've been improved since then, but Devontae Adams is still improving. I take Adams over 70 and a half receiving yards. I have him in the 90s. This is by far and away the best prop for Saturday that I'm seeing on the board right now. And then I combined all three of these to have a nice little card for Saturday. It's Mahomes, it's Adams, and Pacheco. Again, the link in the description, code SAL22 on pricepicks.com. Take that free bet up to $100. Use it or lose it. Why not in week 18 of the season? So we just talked about a lot of expensive players, the recent ones, Derrick Henry and Devontae Adams. We need value. Well, how about value at wide receiver where we usually find it? You have down here Marvin Jones, who's $3,600. Kind of had a random seven target game last week, but that's because some of the starters ended up getting pulled and he stayed on a little bit more. So it was easier to take some targets. Yeah, I think Marvin Jones is in play in this matchup and price tag, especially this slate. He's going to run 25 to 30 routes. He's not all that appealing. He hasn't been great this year. Neither has Nick Westbrook. I'm actually going to choose though Marvin Jones over Nick Westbrook. Nick Westbrook is losing his role to Traylon Burks. And sure, last time out in this matchup, he put up 11 points because he scored a touchdown, but he saw eight targets, but it was because Traylon Burks was out. So maybe to find value, we just have to kind of rely on these tight ends and we build that double tight end lineup because we mentioned Darren Waller's cheap, but somehow Evan Ingram is only $4,500. Now I get it. Last week, he only had one catch, but he only ran 16 routes, like half of what he usually does because he got pulled in that game. The last time he faced Tennessee, not only was the highest scoring tight end, the highest scoring player in fantasy that week, he's not going to repeat this. We can't use this as his baseline. But the fact that it was just three or four weeks ago shows us that, yeah, this is still probably a really good matchup for Evan Ingram, who's just $4,500. He's going to be likely the second highest owned tight end behind Travis Kelsey. But if you pair them together, you get a little bit more unique. Now, some people might be interested in Chiga Conkle because he's only $3,300, but I have bad news for you. Since Traylon Burks returned, and this is what it was all year when Traylon was healthy in the middle part of the season, just seven routes run and eight routes run. 41% of the snaps and 26% of the snaps. He's going back to being a backup tight end. They're not using as many two tight end sets, which is, you know, not that great because we saw him looking really good, but this is what it is. Okay, so earlier I said I'd talk about Jared Cinnamon. It's because he actually looks appealing. I mean, look, last week against the arguably one of the best secondaries in the NFL, the 49ers, he puts up 31 DraftKings points. He kind of balls out three touchdowns, 365 yards, shows some mobility. And now he's a big underdog this week, but he still has a good team total. I mean, he has a 22, 23 point team total. That's solid as a seven point underdog means he's gonna have to throw 
maybe close to 40 times. If you're looking for value, if you don't want to play Mahomes for whatever reason, this is the guy to go to. And if you're going to go to him, maybe you stack him up. You're probably playing Devontae Adams, but what about Mac Hollins, who's just $4,300? Well, my concern with Hollins is that, look, he survives on deep targets. Like, yeah, he's going to catch a couple underneath ones, but to really pop off and be a game changer for you, probably needs a couple of deep targets. And that's somewhat of a concern in terms of chemistry and downfield timing with a new quarterback instead of. But because of his price tag, he'll remain in play. But how about Hunter Renfro, who's $3,800? Now, Renfro, since returning from injury week 15, not really seeing snaps. 42, 48, 49, really slowly being worked back. But for the most part, they're going more two tight end sets. Waller and Foster Moreau, it's leaving less for Renfro. And then you factor in that he's probably behind definitely Adams and Waller and probably even Mac Hollins in the target share here. And if he's only going to be out there for 20 routes, it's not that good. So I'm not interested in Renfro. How about his running back teammate in Josh Jacobs? He's a seven and a half point underdog, but as an underdog, he's been pretty good this season. Now that is skewed by dropping 50 points against the Seattle Seahawks as an underdog, of course. But even last week, he had success. He puts up nearly 20 fantasy points with Jared Stenham. He sees 21 touches. He continues his normal role of all the early down usage and about 60% of the routes run. So I like Josh Jacobs and basically the way the ownership in the DFS blueprint is looking early on you can check it out down below Josh Jacobs and Travis Etienne are picking up a lot of the ownership Derek Henry's actually low owned Isaiah Pacheco is actually low owned so that's a di different way an expensive guy and a cheap way to get different in your lineups but the guy's actually going to be the highest owned is Travis Etienne who is $6,700 and look Etienne only played 38% of the snaps last week but he got pulled midway through the third quarter he still put up 140 total yards three straight weeks of 100 plus yards now the last time he didn't go for 100 plus yards he only went for 30 against this Tennessee Titans defense on 17 touches. That's how good their run defense is. They rank top three in the league this year. So if he's going to be the highest on running back on the slate, this is a decent spot to maybe pivot. He's still a good play. He's projected out great. He's projected out as one of the better plays. He should be closer to 7,500, but it's an interesting pivot. So those are your do's and don'ts for the Saturday slate and a couple of bets. Be sure to check them out with that free bet. Again, link down below, code SAL22 on price picks. Also have content out for the main slate on Sunday and we'll be live Sunday morning as well. So be sure to hit the subscribe button and I'll see you on the next one.